I brought you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Every single week we have something cool that's new. This week from BeagleBoard.org. Yes. The open source hardware provider, one of your favorite small board computers. I think it's one of the tr only true open source hardware single board computers, yeah. um, which I give them a lot of credit for. We'll talk about that. They what have is a it? board that just got released this week, so it's perfect timing because it's in stock at DigiKey. Speaking of. It is the Beagle Fire 5, uh, or Beagle 5 Fire, sorry. F -f -f this is fire. It's this is, fire. This is fire. And uh, it's called that because it features a polar fire processor. So it looks a lot like the Beagle Bone Black, if you guys remember that. And they've also had like the Beagle Bone Green, da -da -da, multiple versions, and the Beagle 5 ahead. This is the new fire, uh, which comes with lots of hardware accessories, the same pinout compatibility, uh, works with accessories that have already been created for the Beagle uh, Bone Black and Green, but. Uh, it has a new processor core. Let's just look at the back real fast. It's got this new Sizigizi uh, connector, which is kind of neat. Uh, micro SD um, and lots of passive components. The top is what the exciting part is because it is featuring um, a Polar Fire SOC FPGA from Microchip. And that's where the fire comes from. The five is because it has WISC 5 core and the fire is from Polar Fire. So, what it's got on the inside is a core, and this is interesting, is, you know, I thought it was like, oh, there's a processor and there's a separate FPGA, but it's actually like a, a yes, it's a FPGA slash processor, but it's combined, actually, it's in one chip. Um, it's for the Polar Fire family, which I will admit, I should have written down the exact part number. It's in the text that goes with this um, video, I don't recall it, but uh, the Polar Fire family, and inside are five processor cores, four of which are fast enough to run Linux. And one of them is like a mo monitor core. So like it's a lower power microcontroller core that could probably be used for, um, uh, you know, monitoring the system and doing, you know, a, a low power sleep mode type stuff when you want to shut down the main core. Uh, and this is very interesting because originally the BeagleBone um, was ARM Cortex-A8s and family, and now they're moving more to RISC-V. And as we know, Risk architecture is going to change everything. Yeah. Risk is good. Risk is good. Um, so the Risk Five uh, core processors inside, like I said, there's it's a quad core. Uh, it's based on the Risk Five specification, so it does not have an ARM core. Instead, um, and this is not implemented on the FPGA. These are actually separate and on the same like die or whatever, on the same package as the FPGA. Um, but these are, you know, you're not emulating the RISC-V. The RISC-V is like there, it's in ROM, silicon, whatever. It's not emulated and are implemented within the FPGA and it follows specifications and it's um, it's a core that they have even ported Linux to. So you it does, like most BeagleBones, uh, boot into Linux Ubuntu. Um, and this is interesting because, you know, a lot of people are, uh, you know, as I mentioned, ARM has been looking to maybe update their um, pricing for um core or device you know royalties um you're interested in designing you know custom silicon normally you would go straight to what well, either an 8051 uh or you'd go to arm but now there's kind of like you know a third party has entered the chat risk five and this chip you know would mean an interesting way for folks who want to take advantage of using the you know open and unlicensed risk five architecture but also want to create additional hardware interfaces that may not require you to necessarily come up with your own silicon, right? You get the benefit of custom fast hardware interfacing um, without the silicon because the RISC-V core parts take care of for you and you do the FPGA part for the extra and at no point do you pay ARM anything, which is you know, a nice benefit. Uh, all right, so this is the part number. It's the MPF uh, S025T. So this is, um, you know, the 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 Polar Fire core that again is the it's a system on chip slash FPGA that is the heart and runs Linux on the Beagle Fire. Um, it's got the hard CPU and the FPGA edition. The FPGA fa fabric, um, you know, I've got the specs down here, uh, 23,000 logic elements, uh, four input LUTs, uh, 68 math blocks, um, 2.7 gigabit per second, SIRDES lanes. 
And separately, if you see the microprocessor subsystem, there's also one 64-bit uh, uh, WISC-5 64 iMac Monitor Boot Core and four WISC-4 four WISC-5 GC application cores. And that's what's running your you know, operating system um, and talks to the FPGA. And then there's also uh, RAM controllers and other you know, uh, peripheral accessories that are needed to get your Linux or whatever operating system you want up and booted. Um, some more specifications. Uh, so the the core has, you know, it's it has onboard memory, which I thought was uh, sorry. This this is the specs for the Beagle Five itself. So in addition to that FPGA SOC core, which has your microcontroller, your microprocessor, and your FPGA, it also has you saw SD SDIO slot, um, quad SPI, has um, uh, NV RAM, which I think you could probably use for storing like you know FPGA configuration. Um, so it looks like uh, EEPROM NVM, maybe SRAM NVM. Uh, it's got two gigabyte of LPDDR4 memory, 16 gigabyte of onboard MMC. So, you know, if you want to use an SD card, but you don't have to, you can boot directly um, from the built-in MMC memory and SPI flash. I bet the SPI flash is for um, the FPGA uh, uh, configuration and all the hardware that is, you know, standard. I mean, they've packed a lot more hardware than usual, um, you know, now comes with um, M dot two key so you can do pcie sdio has a csi connector has uh ethernet gigabit USB C high speed um and of course the um uh, it has tag connect for jtag debugging and it has those like two by 20 headers for connecting capes and other accessories that would be designed for the beagle bone um i put this here just because there's like a, you know a lot of details about the the polar fire soc um, I've never worked with one of these processors, but I think, you know, I think what's interesting here is you get the benefit of, you know, if you don't want to, you, you want FPGA for, you know, hardware interfacing, you want to uh, drive specialty um, machinery, robotics, um, motor controllers, LED displays, you know, TFTs, whatever, you do that on the FPGA side, but you know, the part that you don't have to worry about, the Linux kernel, device drivers, memory management, um, that's in hardware and taken care of for you, but you have a very tight connection between the two because they're on the same uh, on the same chip package. The chip itself is seventy five bucks. So if you're just buying this just as a dev board for the Polar Fire, it's actually a pretty good deal because you get you know the whole thing for one hundred fifty, and you get all those other accessories, and it's fully assembled and tested. Compared to most FPGA dev boards. Uh, this is a really good deal. Most of PG dev boards are like in the couple hundred dollar range. Um, this one has everything. And like I said, you turn it on and immediately boots into Ubuntu. Quite nice. All the accessories built in. One nice thing I noticed is they have screw terminal power. because That could be nice for industrial applications and robotics. Um, they do have a JTAG uh, tag connect. They've got the cape header, built in memory, built in flash, um, camera connectivity. The, PCIe camera and cape headers do go through the FPGA. So that's where you would, if you're going to program that hardware interfacing, that's where they would come out into. Um, LEDs on off button, um, built in Ethernet driver, that's kind of handy. Uh, notice that there's no Wi Fi or wireless, but I think what they're expecting is people would use this with, if you're using one gigabit Ethernet, you need um, high data transfer bandwidth. And so you wouldn't necessarily use Wi Fi. Uh, on the back, um, this Sizigizi connector is interesting. I was like, is this a standard? It's something they came up with, but it's basically like you have M.2. This is like another M.2 like thing where you have uh, a bunch of fast lanes if you need to, um, you know, connect to some hardware that requires uh, very fast differential signaling. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned, one of the nice things is because it's the same size as the Beagle Bone Black, you can use stuff like our case, which is in stock at DigiKey. Thank you, uh, Jason Kridner, who, uh, you know, mentioned this at they were an event. Um, they just used our case, uh, which has a nice clear top and popped the uh, Beagle Fire in and it fit just, just fine because it's exactly the same physical layout as it was before. And uh, it does have CAPE compatibility. So, you know, you know, you can plug in existing hardware that you've designed for previous versions of uh, the Beagle Bone. And I think we still still stock our prototyping cape, so you can use that as well. For 
talking to the FPGA. So obviously, you know, the WISC 5 part, it, you know, you boot the Linux image, uh, you burn it in over USB or whatever, uh, or you have it on the SD card, you're good to go. But if you want to program the FPGA, you're going to have to use uh, Libero. It looks like a lot of people want to use Yo-Yo Assist, but it's not available. Um, again, I don't know a ton about the different open source tool chains, but they do provide tool chain. And it looks like when you register the device with Libero, you enter the MAC address for um, the Beagle board flyer and you get a floating license. So you don't have to, I don't, I do not believe you have to pay for a separate IDE for the FPGA. And they're providing the gateway that will interface with, you know, MIPI CSI. So they have like the basics to get you communicating over that as well as M.2. So, you know, that's your, when you're doing the FPGA, you're like, what is the hardware I'm interfacing with? Those are your hardware interfaces for the custom FPGA work that you might want to do. And um, like I said, this is one of the few truly open source hardware single board computers. The files are up on their um, own Git repository, not on GitHub, they have their own private Git repo. Um, they posted the files, I looked, the schematics are there, the board files are there, Gerbers are there. You could run your own board if you wanted to. Available on DigiKey. Yes, it's actually in stock as of like today. So I wasn't gonna feature, I was gonna feature something else. Last minute, these came into stock. Uh, so check it out. You can pick one of these up. I think, you know, for the price, if you want to do polar fire development um, and you want to have, again, the stability of having a, a well-maintained Linux distribution Ubuntu, and then you have your robotics platform running on top of it, this is definitely going to be well, way more well integrated than taking a single board computer, buying a separate FPGA, and then like trying to yeah. mush them together. Like, here's this. what I'm gonna say. Yeah. If you're the type of person who likes buying dev boards, likes experimenting, please buy one of these, and I'll tell you why. This is the most important thing I think. What? Beaglebone.org continues to do open source hardware. Not everybody does. They do. They do a really good job. And this is you could say it. You could say you like it. You could say all those things. Buy a board. And they are one of the very, very few. I don't, I don't, I don't believe there's any other. And you know, they, really their board. origins came from Texas Instruments. This is really cool. Yeah. So, um, pick one up. That's this week's I don't know. Yeah. Hi, I'm MPI.